In this video, let's look at the operations we can do with NumPy arrays. First, let's see the basic operations in NumPy. We can perform element-wise addition like this. We can do subtraction, multiplication, division. All these operations are straightforward. We can also raise the numbers of an array to a required power like this. If you are familiar with linear algebra, we can perform a dot product using the dot function like this. Let me create a new array and its squared values like this. So the shape of the new array is 2 by 3. We can also take the transpose of an array using the t method like this. Using the t method, it will swap the rows and columns. As we can see, the shape of the new transpose matrix is 3 by 2. By making use of dtype, we can see what type of data the array has, like this. And with making use of as type, we can cast an array to a different type. This is an example of casting an array to different type. NumPy also has some math functions. Some of the commonly used math functions are, we can make use of sum to get the sum of all elements in the array. We have the maximum and minimum. Even we have the mean and standard deviation. Now, to find the index of maximum or minimum value, we can make use of argmax and argmin respectively. I'll explain again when I use it in my program in future videos of the course. Next, let's start learning about indexing and slicing. Let me create an array like this. Once I execute it, the array has the elements from 0 to 11 with their cubes. Just like the indexing we have learned in strings, to access an element in an array, we can make use of bracket notation to get the value at a particular index. So I have accessed the fourth element from the list like this. Always remember the indexing in Python start from zero. We use the colon notation to get the range like this. So what we are specifying inside this notation is, we are specifying the start and the index up to which system should consider while accessing. And we can give the value of index as negative, then the system will count back from the end of the array. I have now printed the last four elements from the list. We can also specify the step size like this. So here I started from last second and counted backwards with step size of two. We can extend this concept to a two-dimensional array. Let me create a two-dimensional array like this. In a two-dimensional array, we can access a specific value by using the comma notation. For example, in this way, we can access the element on third row and third column. Now, let's use the colon notation to get some required range. Let's say we want to access the elements on fifth row with elements in fourth to sixth columns. So we do it like this. Or if we want to print first five rows except last two columns, then we slice it like this. Let's say if you want to print every second row instead of all the rows, then we print it like this. Some other important operations which we can do with arrays are, we can also make use of bracket operator to do the conditional indexing and assignment. This is an example where the Python program would return an array from the original array which has the values greater than 14. We can also use assignment operator for conditional assignment like this. In this example, I have set the values greater than 40 to be equal to 30. 
Now let's look at copying the data in NumPy. So I have now created a new array which has dimensions of 3 by 3 from slicing the previous array. Now I'll set the, all the elements of new array to 1. If I print back the original array, we can see that the slice in this array is also modified. So this is something very important to keep in mind and we should be very careful when working with NumPy arrays. If you want to create a copy of the existing array so that it will not change the original array, then we can make use of copy like this. Now if I change the elements in the newly created array, we can see that the original elements are unchanged. Apart from all this, one last thing we need to know is iterating over arrays. Let me now create an array like this. I have created an array of dimensions 6, 2. We can iterate row by row in the newly created array like this. One more thing we need to recap is, if we wish to iterate through two arrays, then we can use zip like this. From the upcoming videos, we are going to look into how we can make use of Python to manipulate, clean and query the data using the pandas toolkit. I hope you are as excited as I am. See you in the next video.